Today, the journey begins with our hands in God's and our hopes in the future as we head for Jerusalem. Come now is the time to worship, to face the challenge of discipleship. Become a, as the challenge of our discipleship becomes a reality where we live. Beloveds, welcome to worship at Emmanuel United Church of Christ. We are glad you are here and we hope that no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you find a welcome and a community here. Will you stand as you are able in body or in heart for our call to worship? God's laws revive the soul. God's precepts make our hearts rejoice. Let us pray. Holy God, you speak to us and guide our ways through your word. Inspire us by the Holy Spirit to dig deep and be transformed by love, grace, power, and wisdom we find in your scriptures. Into the word. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us sing together.
as we come to this moment, a moment of honesty before God and one another of those times and those places where we have failed to love well despite our best intentions. Will you join me in prayer? God of love, when we look inward and are honest with ourselves, we see where we have lived as though we are not have sought after our own gain rather than the good of all. We have not loved you or our neighbors as ourselves. We have betrayed and denied you and what we have done and not done. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God, that we might become what you have called us to be. Beloved, hear the good news. God, who's unfathomable fathomable love went to the cross for our sake now forgives us all our sins and welcomes us all over again into the promise of eternal life in Christ's name amen amen and peace people reconcile to God and to one another let us share signs of peace with each other And then I'll invite our kids to come up. I can try. Hello. Yeah, I'll try. Hello. I love it. Shoes are optional. Very Moses of you. Hi. No, right there. That's where he's going to sit. Hi. Hi. Well, do you know what season it is? What are some things about this time? Do you know? It's cold. The groundhog said spring is coming early. Do you know what our next big church holiday is? No, what's the next holiday? Easter, that's a big church holiday. 40 days plus Sundays before Lent, before Easter is called Lent. It's spelled exactly like you think. It's a four letter word and it is preparation. What do we get ready for during Advent? Do you remember? We get ready for Christmas, we wait. At Lent, we get ready. Do you know what we get ready for? At Lent, we're getting ready for? Easter? What happens at Easter? They, excellent. Excellent. And so sometimes we spend Lent a lot of different ways. Sometimes people give things up. Have you ever given something up for Lent? Have you? Sometimes people give up sugar or chocolate. <laughs> Nobody really wants to do that. It's supposed to be hard. You'll give up cookies? I doubt it. 
I don't give up cookies. Uh, sometimes we spend the time reflecting. Was there anyone you may have hurt this last year? Like anybody whose feelings you hurt? Anything that was maybe you would need to apologize? Wow, there are some pointed looks. I can't even see it. <laughs> That maybe that maybe you'd need to apologize for, or you want someone to apologize to you for. Both ways, it goes both ways, right? Everybody's got something. Sometimes Lent is spent trying to set our set things right to get ready for what's next to come. So we ask for forgiveness. We reflect on who we want to be, and we get ready for the new life that comes with the resurrection because all things can be made new. Do you think you have to be the same person today that you were yesterday? Do you think you are the same person you were yesterday? Not really, no. And do you think you get to kind of help create who you're gonna be tomorrow? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's part of what Lent is. It's our reflecting on what's going on and are getting ready for who we're gonna be next. Do you think you can spend some time doing that this next month or so? Maybe, maybe write some things down, think about it. Oh, it's a little tiny piece of paper that was once representing seed. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you. Me? Are you with me? All right. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to reflect on the past and get ready for new life. Amen. Excellent. You guys can go to school. <laughs> it's good to have our little bit. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then, come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields 
with persecutions and the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Friends, will you join me in prayer? Holy, loving God. Some days your word is hard. May our reflections this day and every day be a blessing to you and all you love. Amen. It is not our longest passage that we've had in a while. It is dense and it is heavy. And I think I understand the man in the first part of our story who went away grieved when Jesus told him to sell all of his possessions because he had a lot of them. I stand here to admit I might have a lot of possessions. When faced with the difficulty <laughs> with the difficulty and challenge of moving my books, I always did it. And when Kelly tells me too many books and we have to limit them, and too many craft supplies, I buy more boxes. <laughs> Do I love my craft supplies more than Kelly? No. Will I find a way to keep them both? Absolutely. <laughs> and this morning, I hope this works, the late great George Carlin has something to say. Oh no. We'll try again. It was a little delayed. I would have been out here a little bit stuff. sooner, but they gave me uh, the wrong dressing room and I couldn't find any place to put my stuff. And I don't know how you are, but I need a place to put my stuff. So that's what I've been doing back there. Just trying to find a place for my stuff. You know how important that is. That's the whole, that's the whole meaning of life, isn't it? Trying to find a place for your stuff. That's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. <laughs> You could just walk around all the time. That's all your house is. It's a pile of stuff with a cover on it. You see that when you take off in an airplane and you look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody's got their own pile of stuff. And when you leave your stuff, you've got to lock it up. Wouldn't want somebody to come by and take some of your stuff. They always take the good stuff. They don't bother with that crap you're saving. Ain't nobody interested in your fourth grade arithmetic papers. They're looking for the good stuff. That's all your house is. It's a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Funny story. My dad's mother, my grandma, passed away in the summer, and uh, now they're cleaning up things, and they did, in fact, find my dad's penmanship paperwork from when he was a much younger person. And George Carlin was telling about all of the stuff before, in a world before the stuff would just show up at your door like magic, because you didn't have to leave your house to even think about if you actually needed it, to give yourself a second thought, you could just, and it shows up at your door. Seems like, I don't remember what my picture is, okay. Seems like the man who came to Jesus was looking for something, some answer. But I don't know if it was an honest answer. I wonder if when Jesus said, well, do you follow the laws? And he was like, yes. He was convinced the next things out of Jesus' mouth were going to be like, well done. Good job. Praising him for having done what he needed. And then telling him to like, carry on. Go on with your life. The man wanted the answer to what he would need to inherit eternal life to receive something, to earn something that you don't have to do anything to receive. And Jesus answered the question by telling the man 
about the kingdom or the empire of God. And I think it's fair to assume that the man is talking about the life beyond this one, eternal life. And Jesus is talking about life of the kingdom here and now. This man had been living a life that he could control, a life of self-sufficiency. He had been given the law and the things that he ought to do. And he had successfully checked those things off the list. And then the list of things he ought not to do, and he checked those off, and he would be like, another day of not murdering someone? Done. We did not find out he was a person of means until we get to the end of the story, until we get to the answer from Jesus, when we find out he had a lot of stuff or possessions. And when Jesus says that the way to live and to be in the kingdom, the empire of God, is to sell everything you have and to give it to the poor, it grieves him. He goes away grieving. Again, if I had to get rid of my books, I might be the same. He was so certain he was going to get a, a positive pat on the back and an affirmation. And he, what he found was not that. What he found that the answer and what he needed to do was still way far away from where he was. I wonder how hard he had worked, what he had done to accumulate his possessions. I wonder if he saw the things that he had as just what he needed, or there were some things that were like extra bonus things. As he had worked and for and earned, and they were a blessing that he had received. He was self-sufficient. He could move through the world in a way, the work, through the world the way the world expected him to. He could check the things off the list that he did and he didn't do according to the law, and he could get the things he needed for the day. Perhaps, as George Carlin observed, his stuff had become his purpose or meaning for life. Jesus says it's easier. Oh, I have camel pictures. It's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. Yeah. Than it is for a rich man to be part of the kingdom of God. And I don't think it's because he's rich. Because at the end of this section, Jesus talks about losing one's family and then receiving tenfold a family that is maybe not blood. So I don't think it can just be about giving up money or possessions. Now, some have romanticized the idea of living with less. The tiny home movement is one in which people can put all of their needs and wants in a space the size of a shed. And then they're kind of cool. There are little hidden cupboards everywhere and a teeny tiny sink. That is a full-time size stove though. Most of them have teeny tiny stoves. Folks make videos about how they are making their very own teeny tiny home and the amount of money they're spending or saving in that process the things that they're letting go of, and the small quantity of items they have to dig and keep. But most of the time, that's where I see the end of the narrative. It's when the like young, cool kids start building their homes. Now, it's different if we're building small homes to alleviate homelessness, and for our veterans community, this is, these are the cool kids that build the fancy homes. They have built their homes with everything they need. And they've given up much to do so. But I think it's this idea of self-sufficiency. They have built everything. They have everything they need. They don't need to look outside of their space. It's the extreme individualness that says, I did this on my own. I got here without anyone else. I made this, I am self-made. And then saying, I don't need anyone. 
And I think it ends often with us being isolated. And I think it's created a system, a world in which people have become more and more isolated, more and more alone, because they don't think they're supposed to need anyone. I think that's part of where the church comes in. Because we're here to love people. And we're often doing okay, and often, sometimes, we get awards or accolades and we pat ourselves on the back for the good job we're doing of taking care of other people. But if it isn't about possessions, maybe it's about the self or an attitude or a way of living. The camel was the largest animal in, the, in Palestine at the time. There was another saying in Mesopotamia about an elephant going through the eye of a needle. Did you know we have moose in Wisconsin? I didn't know that. It's hard, easier for a moose to get through the eye of a needle than for a self-sufficient person to be part of the kingdom of heaven, to be really part of the beloved community. Because selling everything he had and following Jesus would leave him vulnerable. He would drop immediately into the beloved community. And I wonder if he was afraid. What if there's nothing there? What if it's not everything he hoped it would be? What if there's nothing there at all? Because being open and honest and letting down one's defenses and removing the things that keep us from being fully engaged in community, that make us so we don't need anyone else, whether it's possessions or secret or it's our health or mental illness or addiction or our past that we can't get over it is very very scary we're going to go way back i'm so sorry jesus is asking the man oops too far we don't need you again to run full speed at the pillar at nine and three quarters and trust that he will make it through and find the beloved community on the other side that will support him and will they honor each other and support each other and take care of each other and make sure no one goes without. And I'm sure he's scared because too many people have crashed metaphorically into the vulnerability pillars and found no support. I added our little love heart from our Trans Day of Remembrance. Too many of our queer community have reached out in vulnerability and not found love and support. We have to go way back. Do, do, do. There we go, we'll go there. Here's the thing. I think it is hard for us to, for us. And we, because we know community is important and that giving is important and that caring for each other and the poor is important. And we are really good at caring for them. For being there when someone needs help. We are not very good at asking for help. At being in, but being in community means letting down our defenses and letting go of what keeps us thinking and feeling like we can and have made it on our own. Any kind of love and living with another person or community makes you vulnerable. It will put you in situations and places that you don't expect. It will ask you to be open and change your mind and change yourself and that you or this community will not be the same and that is scary and it is absolutely the point and then this community becomes a place where people can be honest and broken and lonely and struggling lost and uncertain where we where anyone can run into with cautious hope and find beloved community and home and family find welcome and love find what they need. See, I think Jesus meant it when he said, when he told the man to sell all of his possessions, I think Jesus knew as we learn and grow that the possessions we have root us. They reveal where our heart is and they can keep us from being truly in community with those who are different from us. They can keep us from following fruit 
fully the traveling teacher from, travel, from following Jesus into the unknown. George Carlin said it, our purpose of life can become our stuff, but our possessions reveal what we feel is most important. And when we cling to them, instead of surrendering completely, we will often, for really good reasons, like our family and our safety and staying out of the bitter cold, compromise the vision of the kingdom that Jesus is calling us to, the one of mutuality, of sharing our true calling and our true purpose. I think Jesus is calling us into this community, a community that lives in mutuality and resources where everyone has enough and no one has more than they need, a community of relying on each other. And some days this sounds amazing. And what I want to do is start a little collective living community where we all share things because it doesn't make sense that everyone on my street has our own lawnmower when our yards are like the size of this music stand. That's dumb. We don't need it. And then there are days when, there are, when I wonder if I could give up control of my space, my things. And then there are most days when I know I would be really bad. I don't always follow through. These are bad things to admit. And then everyone else does it wrong. Anyway, giving up control. But was and in that moment, he could take step Jesus. And Jesus stood with him in love. And every day we try our best. We try our very, very best to live in the kingdom. Into the way that Jesus is calling us to. We probably won't see it to its perfection. But we keep trying. We keep being open to new people and new ways and possibilities. We keep being open to letting go just a little bit of our control. Of realizing we didn't get here all by ourselves. To let ourselves be a little vulnerable, a little uncomfortable, and to find the grace that we need in each other. And we don't know what happened to the man. He went away grieved, but maybe he came back the next day, or the next month, or he joined the community years later after having sold all of his possessions and giving it to the poor and choosing to live in the community and following Jesus. Just because he walked away in that moment doesn't mean he didn't come back. And just because he may have been the last one in line to enter the kingdom of the into kingdom living doesn't mean he didn't make it and it doesn't make him the least. Both Peter, the self-proclaimed first one through the kingdom gate, and this man, maybe the very last, are fully part of the kingdom. We try our best. And we find new ways to share what we have, to be vulnerable with each other, to love each other's vulnerability, and to be a landing place when folks take the risk of running through the gateway and hoping to find grace. Amen. Friends, will you join me in singing? Or let him. Should we stand? Let's stand. <laughs> Sometimes we have a new song today. Um, I'm going to go over the chorus three times and then just get right into verse one. Um, you're invited to sing along whenever you get it. <laughs> Thank you. 
One of the ways we care for and be a place for those who are falling in need of grace is to lift each other and hold each other in prayer. Our congregational prayers this week are the Yondal family and the Kerr family. Uh, there are birthdays this week. Josh Kerr is having a birthday. Molly Mayer, Miles Kerr, Mason Rivera is turning 12. Where's she going? Oh. Yeah. Uh, and Mary Edwards, happy birthday. Um, we're holding a prayer this week. Julia Starbuck is undergoing surgery tomorrow. Mary Branson's recovering from knee surgery. We're holding a prayer. Lori Bucket, Dan Milo's 
uh, and his mother. Uh, my sister, Jessica, Fran Pike, Connie's friend, Jimmy, Francine's friend, Karen, Donna's friend, Jessica, Ken and Fran Pike's son, Brad and his family, uh, Charlotte's brother, Fred, Julia's friend, Sandy, Sandy Horn's sister, Gail, and Sandy Horn, who's doing the drive back and forth to care for her. Um, Jeannie's friend, Dixie Dixon, and cousin, John Patrick, Steve Thompson's friend, Carl, uh, and those of our shut-in community, Bill and Betsy Welch and Vera Ortman. Are there others we are holding in prayer this morning? More cold days, so prayers for those who um, have no place to lay their heads at night where they are in need of care and shelter and those who provide that for them. Um, where did they go? Oh, they're in the back, because you were ushering. Um, family Promise is in need of prayers. Sue, shall we lift Family Promise in prayers for their time of transition? Yeah, Family Promise has been housing people and in uh, housing vulnerable people in times of transition uh, and families. And they are the space, the nonprofit that they were using, that they were sharing space with, is closing. Um, and so they're losing the space that was housing people. Um, and so they're going to have to renegotiate what the model looks like for how they continue to support um, families in Waukesha County. So hold them in prayer as they figure this out really quick. Um, we hold in prayer with all of those who are living in the midst of and under the threat of violence, um, both in their homes and around the world for those um, who are living in refugee, as refugees in their own land or outside of their land. Um, and prayers, um, always prayers for peace um, in Palestine. Um, we hold in prayer those who are living with and loving those with mental illness or addiction. Um, Is that, do we have anything? All right. We talk a lot about refugees, but I also think we should pray for those who can't provide them. That was great. Many who are stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For those who can't find refuge. Yeah. Um, for the Navalny family <laughs> grieving um, and those in Russia who were uh, counting on um, a change. All right, beloveds, let us Hold the church, the world, our community, and each other in prayer. As we go, you'll hear me say, God of the journey, you're invited to respond in mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we cannot by our own power choose to follow you as we would like. Keep us from becoming discouraged and remind us that with you all things are possible. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us with awe at the astonishing beauty of your creation entrusted to us from the beginning and give us a passion for its stewardship according to your will. God of the journey, in mercy, hear our prayer. 
guide doctors and caretakers in their service to those who struggle physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and send your healing power to all those in need, to those we have named, those whose names live in our hearts, and of course, all those we do not know. God of the journey. Help us to recognize our wealth and the ways it gets in the way of following you and give us greater trust in you to provide for our true needs. God of the journey. We give thanks for all the saints in our lives and throughout history who have followed your commandments and gave sacrificially for the good of the church, community, and world. God of the journey. Confident that you walk alongside us in our need, we lift, all, lift to you all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught his disciples and us to pray to you, God, who is our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because much has been given to us, we come to a time where we are able to give back in multitudes of ways. Um, our offering bowl is in the back and our singing bowl is next to it. Our offering bowl goes to support the mission and ministry of Emmanuel in this building and beyond and around the world. The singing bowl is supporting uh, the Trevor Project, which is uh, the leading suicide and crisis inter prevention and crisis intervention nonprofit for LGBT youth with a 24-hour hotline um, to support and care for. Uh, today, there is council is meeting after church, Bible study Tuesday morning, uh, Wednesday evening, and then next week, Sunday after church. We're having our, so Wednesdays, we're meeting three times, Wednesdays in a row, or Sundays after church, three days in a row, three Sundays in a row, gosh, uh, to discuss Think Again, it'll show up on our little, our slide thing in a second. Uh, Think Again is a book that's encouraging how do we communicate, interact with each other, particularly the people we disagree with, and we absolutely think are wrong. But like also, maybe we're wrong. And how do we embrace the things that we do not know in different ways? Uh, there are lots of opportunities and ways to sign up and participate in the life of the church Please take a look at those. We do letters to our shut-ins, and we do uh, coffee hour. The coffee hour sign-up is on our rotating kiosk. Take a look. Once a year, it's a good sign-up. Are right, there, um, and we, this is always in here. I might skip over it. Cleaning the church building. We save a lot of money by using volunteer cleaners. Please do your part. And this, if you are physically able to sign up for a month to clean, we ask you clean the building two times per month. Take a look. It's in the back. Are there other announcements this morning? Oh, actually, oh. Uh, yeah, choir. Choir practice. We are going to meet afterwards. Get closer to your mic. 
we're going to meet afterwards like for choir practice. So for the five or six of you who signed up, you are definitely like welcome to come. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I know like a few of you probably can't make it, but that's okay. Yeah, um, we'll have a few more like maybe not next week. We'll have another meeting in two weeks and then the one after that. And then that's it. That's it. So if you're still interested in joining our pop-up choir for towards the end of Lent, uh, we'll hang out after for a little bit. Should, uh, Donna, should we be collecting Easter eggs? Um, I, I think we're supposed to have that in Okay. 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 All right. Don't worry about that then. All right, friends. Um, you received a little handout, a little little note along with your bulletin this morning on the back, on the, the small lettering. It's an invitation to consider what are the things that you need? What is the thing you need help with? What is the place of vulnerability? Um, I'm going to invite you to think about it. In every one of the, the, you can write it on there, but if you want to keep your little handout, there are... Um, just loose pieces of paper floating around, in, in, usually in the sign-in books because I keep handing out little pieces of paper. Um, what is that thing? And you don't have to turn it in. Sometimes we say to de deposit it in the back. What is the thing that would be vulnerable for you to share? What is the thing that you hope, you fear no one will be there if you share it, but you hope they will? What is that thing that we can be there for you for? That is what we will consider, maybe write down about in our time of our reflection. Oh, there isn't a song, so we'll just do this. I mean, there is a song. I don't have lyrics for it. Take your time. Join me in prayer. God of, you call us to sacrifice for the sake of the gospel. And we are well aware that we come actually from you. Accept these gifts as a sign of our faithfulness to your call and use them for the good of all that you have made. Amen. Amen. Friends, will you stand then as you are able for our closing hymn?
May we go from here leaving a trail of love in our wake that others will find it and the path to life lived in the richness of God's promises. Go in peace and love to love all that God has made. Amen.